Hi there YouTube, it is I, the one, the only, Nadia Exotica. I wanted to share a little story. Don't know why, I just, I just feel compelled to share it. Um, just, I don't know, I just thought of this out of the blue and kind of like, it, it kind of gauges for me, like, how much I've seriously grown so much, like, truly, um, you know, and yeah, so I guess I just kind of wanted to talk about it, it's been on my mind, um, yeah, so this is a personal story of, like, when I experienced, like, a certain moment in time, which there's been some, but it's not, luckily, I mean, it, it's not been, like, a common theme you know uh in my life throughout my life um where I've experienced discrimination for being transgender um I I personally do not like to use the terms transphobia and transphobe to me it just well I have my reasons but it just doesn't really capture what's really at play and in my opinion, it's kind of been bastardized a bit. So, yeah, I just don't use it. I mean, if someone's being outright, there's there's just a huge difference between someone being completely driven by hate versus somebody who may just not be educated on the subject. There's two different variations of, of ignorance, you know, and uh, it's that's a whole other conversation, but... Yeah, so let's just get into this. Um, I was really young, possibly like 15, uh, yeah, 15, when I was friends with this particular person who would bring me around their family. Um, I grew really close with their father. Um, honestly, he treated me like a daughter. Like, I was so fucking grateful to have this man be so amazing, you know, and caring for me, uh, in the way that he did. Um, and I remember one time meeting a certain extended family member, um, and them being completely welcoming and super nice and, you know, just, just meeting me and, and not thinking anything of it really, you know, um, it wasn't until probably like a few months after that exchange of, you know, greetings that I found out that this person had less than satisfactory things to say about me, particularly because they found out that I was trans. Um, and it's a little complicated because hello, I'm like 15 and this person at this time, I'm sure was in their late 30s, early 40s. Um, maybe I'd comfortably say like late 30s at this point in time. And uh, what the hell, <laughs> you know, and I'm in this household with this father who is just super kind, you know, obviously hearing about that, I was like, dumbfounded, like, okay, you know, I didn't say anything to make this person not like me. There wasn't anything in particular that I knew of that would indicate, you know, that, I don't know, we didn't hit it off. It, it was just completely like out of nowhere, right? Like just whatever. Um, every single encounter from then on that I had with this person, they were sweet as pie to me in my face as people usually are. And I didn't, for the sake of this family, I, I didn't ever say anything. I'm like, no, I'm not, I can't, I can't. Like really like weighing everything out. It was so fucking hard for me to bite my tongue, but weighing everything out, I'm like, it's not worth it. No, hell no. And uh, I just kind of like had this feeling like if I ever see this fucking person out in public alone, they're going to hear from me because again, please take and like, please, please, please take note of the fact that I was in a whole other headspace, completely different person from the ages of, for those who don't know, I transitioned at 12 technically, but I like to say 13. Um, I 
was in the completely wrong, like steered in the wrong direction from the ages of like 15 to 19, comfortably I would say, or like late 14, 15. Anyways, completely different person. I thrived off of confrontation. I didn't give a shit. I had such a chip on my shoulder, which I've spoken about in previous videos of mine. And uh, it was well within my nature to confront the source of when I'm hearing bullshit to go right, right to them and be like, so what's up? You know, now it is a completely different ball game. I'm actually so fucking proud of how I handle things and how I'm able to let go of things and um, really pick and choose those battles. I'm not going to even lie. I do like now, even now, like really, really try to, I guess, like I'm at a constant battle with myself. I'm like, I could give this person a response, but I, sh I know I fucking shouldn't. Right. Um, but the whole confrontation thing is I don't, I don't want it. There's no room for it in my life. No, thanks. If it came down to it, like really came down to it, of course, like I have that ability to stand up for myself. Absolutely. But no, you know, so anyways, just had to kind of give you a idea of where my head was at during this time. Um, but I was so hell bent on fuck this person. No, thank you. Um, and, uh, years go by years. I'm talking years. And I had been hearing over and over like, oh, she's been saying this when you're not around. Oh, she's been saying that or da, 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 whatever. And I'm like, this person is acting like I did something so horrendous to, to them. It's almost as if like I harmed them, harmed their family or something. Like that's the vendetta they had out for me. And it just finally came to a head. I was uh, a grown adult when this happened. I must've been like 18, 19. Um... I saw this person out in public one day uh, at this, like, I shouldn't even say it. No, fuck, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Like, I'm so past it. We're, we're so past it. But um, I saw this person out at a restaurant. I didn't see them in the restaurant, but leaving the restaurant, like, both of us at the same time, we had a not-so-nice exchanging of words, at least on my behalf. I was very vicious. Um, she was acting dumbfounded. Like, what are you talking about? Um, especially, I'm assuming it was because she was there with one of her girlfriends. Um, mind you, no, I'm not going to say that either. Um, but yeah, so she acted completely dumbfounded when I let this person have it. Um, verbally like I was I was on it and um we just parted ways after a yelling feud in the parking lot and after that this person was kind of like weary and didn't want to be around me and you know and I don't know what they had to say about me after that I don't know their mindset after that I just knew that this person did not like me because of my gender identity and um thinking back my mom was I'm so much like my mom um she was the same way you know extremely headstrong always stood up for what she believed in had such a loud distinct voice you know when it came down to things like that and I, like, I'm so grateful that I have that as a tool, you know, but, um, I remember, like, I've been thinking about this in particular. She always told me to watch out for the people who tell you things that other people are saying. Um, she always told me that and she had given me examples of how she had to learn that the hard way. And I think that's why I feel so compelled to share this story is because thinking about my mom, like telling me this. I really like, I don't know. It's, it's true. You should always, your brow should be raised in suspicion when someone is so eager to tell you something that they heard or that someone said in front of them, you know, it's suspicious. It's very odd. Um, fast forward to recent times. Um, this 
this particular person has a kid who is questioning themselves, who um, is questioning their identity. Uh, and obviously all the obstacles that come with it, you know, socially. And I am now the absolute like golden figure to this person. They have nothing but sweet things to say about me. And <laughs> it's as if the past completely never happened. And while I can forgive, of course, I will never forget. Of course not, you know, because mainly people remember that feeling that you made them feel. Um, but I found it so oddly just the universe at play that that scenario ends up in your personal life. You know, it's almost as if there's a lesson to be learned there. Um, I've, I've never been the type to dislike somebody for being different. If I find out someone is different than me, I want to know more. I want to hear life from your eyes. I want to hear life from your experience. Truly, and um, I just don't understand. I don't understand because in all honesty, someone else living a different life than you is not affecting you in any way, shape, or form. And obviously, there's a whole online debate with all these sort of things that come into play and people absorb so much with what they see online and that becomes what they believe even though it's not their everyday, day-to-day -day life. It's what they read and see and absorb. And no duh, it's going to get fixated in your brain because you're always seeing it and reading it. But the moment that you actually get to know somebody, actually experience someone on a very personal face-to-face -face level, I can only hope that that experience for you changes your thinking. There's no reason someone just living, just breathing, existing, presenting how they want to should hinder your thinking, hinder you, hinder your daily life. There's absolutely no reason for it. And it will not stand. It's just not going to stand for me. If I witness it, if it's me personally, you will not talk to me in a, with any sort of disregard to, you know, who I am as a person, things that I can't change just because you don't experience them yourself. You write them off as not being real. That's just not going to fly with me. I've done nothing to anybody. So I just, I find this particular instance very interesting because again, they were so hell bent on not liking me. It's like, imagine if your child grew up and found out the heinous bullshit that you were spewing about said person who they are share you know something unchangeable you know it's like I would be fucking heartbroken finding out that my guardian who has been so accepting my whole life has been this hateful person I would be upset so I just ask that you please like assess everything and everybody you know, individually, it, it, to say a whole group of people are like this way, share the same beliefs, share the same ideas, you know, as this particular person or as this whatever that you see, whatever, is so incorrect. It's absolutely incorrect. And sometimes it's about meeting that barrier breaker of a person to know Oh my goodness, everything I've been thinking of is complete bullshit, <laughs> truly. So I've always been that way. Like imagine like there's just been people that I talk to online through adult work who have been from one place or the other that have experienced different things and I've always welcomed them with open arms so long as they're nice to me. I, do, I don't care. I don't care what you're into. I don't care what you believe. I don't care anything. As long as you treat me as a human being and vice versa, that's just how it's going to be. So I just think there's something to be learned from that.
from that particular instance, like, so hell-bent on disliking somebody because of the way that they present. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Please do better. Please. So, I don't know. I wanted to share that. I have no ill will towards this person. Genuinely, um, no, no. As a matter of fact, like, I feel really bad, you know, for how they previously treated me and believed. Like, I, I feel pity for them. It's sad. Um, and that's it. You know, there's no point. Like, you just move on as you do. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or video requests, feel free to email me. My email is NadiaExotica at gmail.com. Follow all my links at my website, which is NadiaExotica.com. And then also read my blog, which is NadiasCurioTrove.com slash blog. And until the next video, you will be hearing from me very soon.